In government, the zoning board met remotely Tuesday night to discuss four cases. The first case requested to withdraw their application without prejudice. The request was approved by the board. The next two cases focused on residents looking to make additions to their homes. Both permit applications were approved and the board wished both groups luck. Residents in the last case were seeking a special condition extension. The board approved a 90-day extension for the group. The ZBA meets next in October. The airport commission met at the airport Wednesday afternoon. Russ McGuire presented the airport manager's report and reminded residents of an exciting public event coming up in October. We're, we've been working on a uh, special event October 16th, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, this, is, this is a special event. Uh, we're working in conjunction with the recreation department and flight level one. It's called Wings and Wheels. Uh, and through the uh, recreation department, we've already started the sign-ups online. My understanding is we have 200 people uh, signed up, both adults and children. And this is to uh, get them inside the fence, uh, specifically onto the Lots ABC out here, just to the east uh, of the building, and out to Flight Level's new uh, aircraft hangar. And also to set up a static display for both um, some of the ground vehicles in the town, uh, airport department vehicles, as well as other department vehicles, and also some of the uh, aircraft that we have here. Thanks, Russ. To join the waitlist, please contact the rec department. Moving into the agenda, the board reviewed a job description before passing it along to the town manager. Airport tenant, Southern Airways, presented a recap of the past year and exciting future plans. The board meets next in October. The Economic Development Committee met in the Selectman Chambers Wednesday night with representatives of Moderna. The committee approved a 55% TIF or tax incremental financing. The recommendation will now go to the Board of Selectmen and pending a vote of approval will be placed on the special town meeting warrant. The school committee met remotely Wednesday night. Facilities Director Paul Riccardi shared upcoming school projects for the facilities department. Health Director Seagal Reese presented a COVID-19 update for the committee. Um, I'll just go ahead and provide a, a brief update on uh, this week's data. Um, thankfully, not a lot of changes from last week. I'll pull it up. Um, so looking at the, we'll start with the vaccination rate um, for the 12 to 18, it did go up one percentage point. So um, an additional students um, reaching fully vaccinated and then you see the partially vaccinated there, which hopefully in the next few weeks will increase that percentage. And then for the total population, it is going up slightly each week, but um, we're still at about 69%. Um, if you remember last week when we talked, the case count, I believe was about 75 or 76. It's always plus or minus a few, depending on when I run the report versus when the state runs a report and then um, shares it on the, on Thursdays. Um, so it'll be around uh, around 77, like I said, plus or minus, um, which is not, which is pretty even with last week. I want to just show the group um, the two-week case count by age. So this is, again, just that two-week period, just to so show it is a pretty widespread of, of age breakdown, um, but looking at those older populations, of course, that are tend to be more vulnerable to the disease, they continue to be small percentage of our cases in fewer numbers, um, partly attributed to the high vaccination rate, but we've been seeing for a long time, even you know um, at the end of last year, school year through the summer, that it's the younger ages where we are seeing um, more cases. And by younger, I mean, you know, uh, 30 th through maybe, you know, 19, like we see here. Following some discussion on COVID policy inside school buildings, Dr. Thompson defined a close contact situation in the schools. As we're talking about notifications and talking about close contacts, could either you or Seagal define uh, what a close contact is at this point in time relative to school setting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the Department of Education is saying that a close contact is if you were closer than three feet or not wearing a mask in a classroom. So given that all of our, so I'm going to just say that in a different way. Okay. Um, given that all of our students will be masked, there will be no close contacts. Unless they're no. less than three feet, correct? correct? Right. Yes. If you're within three feet and you are masked, you are still a close contact. If you're beyond the three feet and masked, you are not a close contact in a classroom. Okay. And so the reason why I laughed a little is that it's not an easy question and I wish we could pull up that slide. Um, 
you know, a close contact contact we know defined as anybody within six feet for 15 minutes over a 24 hour period. There are some stipulations for in school because of really the controlled environment, all the mitigation strategies that you know you've put in place. So that's why there's this sort of carve out for the classroom close contact with a little different definition. And that's where we get into um, the three feet in the masked. You know, if you're beyond three feet and masked, you are not a close contact. Whereas if you were in another environment that wasn't as controlled, you would be. Later, Dr. Thompson updated the committee about the first week of school and enrollment. Assistant Superintendent Dr. Wyeth provided a final recap of summer programs around town. Karen Sheridan provided a detailed review of the end of year report for the fiscal year 2021. Afterwards, the board discussed policies regarding student activities and MASC updates. The school committee meets next on September 22nd. For complete government coverage, tune into the NCM Government Channel or watch on demand at nordcommunitymedia.org.